Noelle Roberts, Patriot Mom 007. We're here with Josh Barnett, good friend of ours in Arizona. You know him, you've seen him on my YouTube channel before. And we're today, we're here at his business. We're gonna go over that later and give him a little shout out. But today we're gonna to talk about all things Arizona legislature. We've got a lot going on in Arizona as always. And Josh, thanks again for calling me over here because we always wanna hear what's happening with national freedom and with the organization with what you're um, up to. So sure. tell us what's happening. Well, we're in the middle of, um or not the middle, the very beginning of a recall of Gates uh, with the National Freedom Coalition. Uh, Rosemary, Deborah, Cindy, Michael are kind of handling that. Affidavit and, and Mamas. Affidavit Mamas, yep. yeah, that's Rose and Deborah. Yep. Um, and, and the whole crew, and they're out um, really, really hitting the streets and, and getting you know getting tons of signatures every day. So um, if anybody wants to check that out, it's nationalfreedomcoalition.com if you want to get involved. Uh, just just contact you know through contact us there right. and um, and they'll get right back to you for Excellent. sure. Excellent. So tell us uh, what you guys have been working on. Well, the number one thing that I've been working on and I've been harping on this, kind of beating a dead horse with it in a way, is uh, is appointing the 2024 presidential electors to the Republican primary winner. Do it now, not right. later. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that it's not um, something that has to be done later. We can do it right now. We do it before the primary because it takes that, the people of TDS, right? It takes that completely away because it's not about just Trump. It could be DeSantis. It could be Nikki Haley. Right. It could be Tim Scott. I don't know. Whoever it is. Whoever. It's not going to be a Democrat. Right. That's what's important because look what's happening to our nation and the world right now. We have a dementia patient, you know, that's got installed as president. Exactly. So the, the whole world's falling apart, literally. So, um, so that's what I've been working on and also uh, pushing... Um, uh, Christian Lamar came up with defunding Maricopa County. Right. And I 100% agree with doing that, and I 100% agree that it can be done legally and constitutionally. Um, he has his method of going about it as far as they're censoring people and they're doing yep. this stuff, which I've stayed away from. It's it's one one method. It's 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 right. their it's their way. They're upset. They're right. frustrated. They don't feel like their um, their 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 representatives are, are talking with them, right. and, and, you know, and communicating with them, which I I, I definitely feel their frustration. Um, uh, when they tell me about it, you know, but uh, I believe in going and just talking to your representatives and having a conversation, setting up time to sit down and talk about it and tell them, have them tell you why they can't do it. So who have you been? I know they with? can. They can, of course <laughs> they can. Of course yeah. they can. Yeah, they can do way more than they probably yeah. are, and maybe for different factors they can't because their hands are tied, or or maybe they're newer and they don't know how to get through the processes as quickly. So we have to give them a little leeway. But I know what you're saying. So I've been telling people to contact whoever your state representatives are or state senators are, contact them and let them know that you want to, you want them to appoint the 2024 electors. And I'll explain a lot more in detail here. And you want them to defund Maricopa County. And the reason why you want that is that's the only potential way we're ever going to have election integrity to be signed by Hobbs. Right. There's no other way. If you don't, if you don't give her, um, this, this is like kind of playing offense and then giving her the ball and say the ball's in your court now. So, Hobbs, you're not going to get a dime from Maricopa County. We're going to defund the ninth floor. We're going to defund the bureaucracy in Maricopa. It doesn't affect schools. It doesn't affect um, any safety-related, like police, fire, right. anything like that. Services, any yeah. the Any of the, the, the core infrastructure is not affected. It's truly the bureaucracy in Maricopa County. The offices right yeah, there. Yeah, and Maricopa Board of okay. Supervisors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those people. So, um, it would defund them. And, you know... Um, What's the lever for that? Who who is the person like who defends them? How does that work? The Senate. I mean, the leg state legislature. They they control the budget. They control the money where it's allocated. And if you look up, um, it's a one ninety four point oh one or forty one dash one ninety four point oh one. There's four subsections. It lays out what can be done. And basically, in a nutshell, I'll, I'll kind of a paraphrase what yeah. it is. Um, if Maricopa County is breaking laws, which they're breaking election law, right. then the legislature or excuse me, the treasurer can withhold funds okay. from the county because they're breaking law. And it, and it, cl it clearly says this. All right, so that gives that they, them a letter, yeah, that yeah. What they can do. And, and why I'm pushing the, we've had, I asked people this, a few simple questions. Was 2020, 2022 illegally run? Yes. I have my light set on that. Oh, uh, that's okay. Uh, that's all right. No worries, no worries. <laughs> it's still okay, light wise. No worries. Um, but um, so I asked that question and, and they're like, yes. You know, pretty much every Republican will say yes. I don't say rigged or stolen. I say was it run illegally? Right. It so rules, form, right. procedure, Process, yep. statutes, exactly. all broken in the election. And, and you know, pretty much, and most independents will say yes. You know, they know there's something wrong. Um, 
Democrats, I don't care what they think, so I don't even bother asking them. Because <laughs> even if they did know, they're just going to lie. Lying, they're right. just going to lie. Right, because right. in 2016 and 18, they were saying the same stuff we're saying now. Well, maybe they don't lie officially, but their vision of reality is skewed a no, little bit. No, they lie. So it doesn't always work <laughs> to the truth, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but but so I, I ask these questions. Then I ask um, our representatives or senators, so if a Republican voted for you to be in office... They expect you to vote for a Republican president, I would assume. And they're like, well, yeah, you know, right. I'm sure there's one, maybe not. But yes, sure. if, if independents voted for you as a Republican in office right now, did they not vote? Not because you're just Republican. But they, they want a Republican agenda. Right. Controlled border. Yep. You know, lower Fiscal taxes. All, the, all yep. the common sense stuff that we stand for. Democrat, again, I don't care what they think, so I don't even worry about them. Because they, they're not voting for us. You know exactly. what I mean? So... The independents and Republicans either voted because they want a Republican president, you know, or, or wanted you to be able to, they trust that you're going to be that person, right? right? do what they want, and, yeah. and they voted you in office. The first hundred years of the country, roughly, we used to appoint the electors and the senators. Right. Right? So the 17th Amendment changed that in 1913. They went, they, we should have kept that too. For those who don't know, Josh is a, a, almost an expert on constitutional law and statutes. So when he's saying these things, just know that he knows what he's talking about. This is not something he just looked up or, or for this interview. He actually knows this stuff cold. So I just want people to know that this is something he lives and breathes every day. And it's not just right this second. So anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the 17th Amendment got rid of the appointment of senators. But it never changed the appointment of electors for POTUS, right? So... Well, Leo was like, hey, you look at McPherson v. Blacker in 1892, that's like the OG gold standard for plenary Please. authority of the mm -hmm. legislature, right? With the Supreme Court precedents. And, and that's why I brought it up here for, for y'all. We'll kind of cheat and yeah. work off of it. But, um, you know, you have uh, many states that, get, that appointed the electors, and over time, they switched to popular vote. So South Carolina was the last state in 1860 to do uh, appointment of electors. But up to that, like, about 100 years, right. they were doing this along the way. So, you got Bush v. Gore, which I left up here. Now, I want people to understand this because a lot of people don't know this. I honestly didn't know this part until Leo pointed it out to me. The individual citizen has no federal constitutional right to vote for electors for president of the United States. Oh, wow. That's so, interesting. Yeah, so unless... And that's right off the top of the... the uh, is this a statute? Yes, yeah, it's Bush v. Gore. We're, watching, we're actually checking out a computer. You guys remember that Bush, Bush v. Gore, the case, you know, yeah. the battle the battle back then. And, and it says, unless and until the state legislature chooses a statewide election as the means to implement its power to appoint members of the Electoral College. And again, that's Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2. So then it talks about McPherson v. Blacker. Now, the great thing about McPherson v. Blacker is it says that the state legislature's power to select a manner for appointing electors is plenary. Right. It means they have full 100% control of the manner of election. So they, they want to do a popular vote. They want to appoint the electors. They want to do whatever they want to make up. I don't know. They Maybe they'll the, think they of something the later. They can do whatever they want. And if it so chooses, it can select the electors itself. Now I'm going to skip down here where the bull face. Now this is a, this is a Chief Justice Rehnquist. Yes. And Scalia and Thomas concurred with this uh, ruling from correct. Rehnquist. Correct, correct. And everybody loves, especially Justice Thomas. Right. You know, at least, and Scalia too. But... The state, of course, after granting the franchise in the special context of Article 2, can take back the power to appoint electors. Right. Anytime. Then it goes on, quote, There is no doubt of the right of the legislature to resume the power at any time, for it can neither be taken away nor advocated. Yep. They cannot touch this. Then it goes on with, like you said, the concurring right. um, comments from Rehnquist, Scalia, and Thomas. Um, basically, uh, let me find the one. It's, it's phenomenal because with Florida at the time, what we believe is that a lot of times the Supreme Court will stick their nose and stuff right. with the elections, right? As you guys have noticed, right? <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately. Hands-off approach. But the state legislature in Florida knew that they could appoint the electors. And they started, they were, they were on the verge of doing it at the time because they were getting frustrated. So, they were on the verge of actually doing it. And then the Supreme Court stepped in. I, I believe that they stepped in to shut it down so people don't know that you can actually do this. Right. But it's already on the book. But it's already on the book. Right. So, um, so I scrolled down here because there's another case that's more recent. Okay. So it's Chalfalo v. Washington in 2020. 2020, yeah. An 8 to 0 unanimous decision, okay? Which is, wow. Now, this is not direct to appointment of electors, but it does show you the power of the legislature that they have. 
Um, and it is an electric issue, but not in the sense that we're talking about. So it says, begin at the beginning with the nation's first contested election in 1796, would-be electors declared themselves for one or the other party's presidential election, or candidate, sorry. In some states, legislatures chose the electors and others ordinary voters did, so there's a regular popular vote. And nothing in the Constitution expressly prohibits states from taking away presidential electors. Voting discretion as Washington does, meaning not the state of Washington, but in this case. The Constitution is bare bones about electors. Article 2 includes only the instruction to each state to appoint in whatever way it likes as many electors as it has senators or representatives. So, again, it tells you that they can do this any way they like. Um, so we're in the middle of talking about uh, rulings from the Supreme Court that deal with um, the plenary powers and electoral votes for the presidency. So we're right in the middle of talking about the Chifalo versus Washington 2020 and 8-0 unanimous decision. So let's just pick up from there. Sure, sure, yeah. So the one thing that I just finished up with is that Article 2 includes, this quoted, Article 2 includes only the instruction to each state to appoint in whatever way it likes. As many so, as electors. So as basically senators. the states can choose the way they want to do it. Exactly. They can choose. Bottom line. Way. And they never lost. Just because we decided well, we're going to do a popular vote now doesn't mean we lost the authority or the ability to reclaim that authority to go back to appointed electors. So who do you need to convince or do, who do people need to call to convince to make that happen? Because that's the ultimate yeah, goal, your, right? Your state senator and your state representatives. Okay. Call them and tell them. Listen, I know that the elections have been illegally run. It's obvious. What's the message? Well, you would have, typically you'd have um, like an LD3. So she's an LD3. So she would be calling uh, Chaplick. Right, I have Joe Chaplick as my representative. And, Alex, and Alex Collins. And then uh, um, uh, Kavanaugh. And John Kavanaugh. So those would be the ones you want to talk to. Those, are, those are the ones you want so to talk to. So in your legislative district. Yes, okay. so those are the ones you want to talk to. So you would call John and say, hey, John, I'm a constituent in your district. I know um, the election's been illegally run twice in a row. I know that nothing has been done to secure the elections for 24. And I encourage you to appoint the electors on my behalf and appoint the electors and say and protect my vote.